Hey y'all, it's Coloco. As much as some are excited for a new Metroid Prime 4 on the Switch, me including, <laughs> oh, yeah. the announcement left a lot of us scratching our heads, wondering, why make it now? Some say it's because of fan outcry, others say it's Nintendo's decision that they made on their own. Well, I'm here to look at the numbers to tell us the real reason why it took so long for us to get a new Metroid Prime game. A shout out to William D'Angelo, who wrote the article where I got a lot of the stats you'll see here. I'll link it below. Let's start by looking at what the series has done financially, because let's face it, it's all about the green green. The Metroid series in its entirety has sold more than 16.79 million, with 12 games being released over every Nintendo console with the exception of Nintendo 64, Virtual Boy, and the Wii U. If you look at the release date, nine of the games were released in the 2000s, with two in the 1990s and one in the 1980s. One on the NES, one on the SNES or SNES or whatever you want to call it, two on the GameCube, and three on the Wii. One on the Game Boy, two Game Boy Advance games, one on the DS, and one on the 3DS. Boo. Now 17 million sounds great for a series, but it actually hasn't sold that well, compared to other Nintendo franchises of course. It's the 17th best selling, with title series like Animal Crossing outselling it by over 23 million, with only 6 games made for that series. That's more than double the sales with more than half the games. Now granted, Animal Crossing is a beast of a series, but it's worth to note that we haven't seen a follow up to that game that's not a spin off since 2012. Still. That's nothing compared to the Metroid Prime series, one that we haven't seen since 2007. J just forget what happened last year. The Metroid Prime series has sold 7.25 million copies. That's 43% of the total sales for the franchise. Good numbers. So why did it take Nintendo so long to produce Metroid Prime 4? Well, let's break those numbers down. Metroid Prime and Prime 2 Echoes came out for the GameCube, one of Nintendo's most unsuccessful systems as far as sales go. It went on to sell a measly 21.74 million million consoles in its lifetime. Only the Wii U and the Virtual Boy sold less. Metroid Prime sold 2.82 million, which is the most in all the Metroid series. 13% of GameCube owners bought this game. Metroid Prime 2 Echoes sold 1.33 million, which equates to 6% of GameCube owners buying it. But wait, that doesn't make any sense. They were both received rather well. Echoes might have not been as good as the first Prime, but overall they were pretty close. I looked and looked and couldn't find any real reason why the sequel sold this poorly. Then it clicked. There was another game that came out just days before Prime 2, and it completely stole the show. Yes, Halo 2 came out, and speaking as a Nintendo fan, I was floored by this game, and everyone I knew was also. In my opinion, it completely overshadowed Prime 2's release, and took any first person shooter fans with it. It didn't help that Echoes came a bit too quickly as well, releasing almost exactly two years after the first. It might have worked better if they would have just waited a bit, at least until after the Halo 2 craze died down. The next Metroid Prime came out on the Wii, and with it releasing less than a year into the mega popular console's life cycle, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption was geared to be the best selling in the series, until it wasn't. Corruption sold only 1.79 million. Now I know what you're thinking. But Andy, that sold more than part two, and it's the third best selling Metroid game ever. And while that's true, it should have sold lots more. Metroid Prime 3 was regarded as a great game, critically speaking, yet only 1.8% of Wii owners bought this game. Out of all the major releases directly from Nintendo on the Wii, Prime was the 27th best selling and 76th overall. Not good numbers at all, and clearly, Nintendo fans were sending a message to Nintendo with their wallets. They were losing interest in the series. Would Nintendo win those fans back? Spoiler alert. It only got worse from there. Nintendo tried something else to see if maybe mixing up the series would help re-engage the fans' interest. Metroid Other M came out in 2010, to the worst ratings the series has ever seen, and not so great sales either. 1.35 million copies sold. The backlash Nintendo received from this game was not great. 2010 was also more than halfway in the Wii's life cycle, so there was no chance of a new Metroid Prime game on that system. It would have to wait for the next home console, which absolutely flopped.
flop. Yes, the Wii U was an unmitigated disaster. So it's no wonder Nintendo opted not to release a Metroid Prime game on that system. It would have only been sent out to die like so many Wii U games, which is why we're seeing so many of them on the Switch. Grumble, grumble. So from 2010 to 2016, we got nothing of Metroid until Metroid Federation Force. It still boggles me to this day why Nintendo would make a Metroid Prime game without being able to play as Samus. But besides that, I felt that the game was actually pretty good. It had some control issues, but otherwise, it was a genuinely fun experience. Critics and fans did not agree, giving it the worst reviews for a Metroid game yet, and selling incredibly poor, 100,000 copies. Just to put it in perspective, Happy Feet 2 and Puppies 3D sold better than this game. Ouch. So now we know why Nintendo didn't take a chance on Metroid Prime 4 until this point. But why now? Was it Nintendo's decision or was it because of fan outcry? I'd say it's a bit of both. Nintendo has stated that they do look into social forums and what fans are saying about what they want to see of their IPs. But let's not get it twisted. Nintendo wouldn't just make games based on what Nintendo fans want. After all, they're a business. They're not looking to keep making games that don't sell. More than forums or YouTube comment sections, Nintendo looks at the money and Metroid series just hasn't been cutting it lately. I think the fact that it's been such a long time since a prime game has been out, the continual rise in popularity of first person shooters and the Switch being the most powerful Nintendo console yet makes this a perfect time to make a Metroid Prime 4. Also, it's my opinion that the Switch is more geared towards hardcore gaming fans more than casuals as the Wii was. And I do believe a prime game would do better with a Switch fan base than a Wii fan base. So there you have it. The reason why Nintendo decided this was the best time for a Metroid Prime 4. Do you agree or do you think I'm a complete tool? Either way, let me know below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button, hit subscribe, and that'll let me know to keep making more like it. Thanks for watching.